Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. So today's class will be on autophagy under the cell injury series. So what is autophagy? As the name suggests, auto means self, while phagy means eating. So it literally means self-eating. So when does a cell eat itself? It is when it is in need of a survival, right? So whenever there is something which is uh, preventing the cell, suppose there is a decrease in the growth factor or there is a decrease in the nutrition, so the cell will try to survive in this environment by eating its own cell contents, okay? So it is also called as cell cannibalism. So it is basically a survival mechanism and it can happen both in physiological and pathological conditions. In physiological conditions like aging and during exercise while pathologically during malnutrition when there, whenever there is nutrition is not enough like in starvation as well or during infections so in these conditions the cell will eat its own contents to survive so this is one of the protective mechanisms to recycle the essential metabolites of the cell and to clear the intracellular debris. So whenever the debris accumulates inside the cell, the cell will uh, undergo aging and uh, cell death, right? So in order to prevent that and also for the turnover of the organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria. So for all of this, the cell has to undergo autophagy. It is a normal mechanism as well. So it is actually a protective mechanism. This is actually associated with atrophy. So why, like I mentioned, if you remember in uh, while discussing about cellular adaptations in atrophy, I had mentioned malnutrition atrophy. Whenever the cell is deprived of its content, uh, deprived of its nutrition, the cell will undergo atrophy, right? And atrophy and then apoptosis as well, right? So these apop uh, apoptosis, atrophy and autophagy are somewhat interrelated. So malnutrition again I mentioned, it is resulting in autophagy. So, it, uh, since malnutrition is associated with atrophy, it is also related with autophagy. So, what is the organelle in which autophagy is taking place? The cells, uh, organelles will get degraded in the lysosomal only. So, lysosome is the organelle wherein autophagy takes place. To a particular point of time, the cell will try to eat its own contents like its organelles and all that and try to survive. But when it is not able to cope up with that, the cell has to die eventually. And this form of cell death is neither necrosis nor apoptosis remember it is neither necrosis nor apoptosis it's a distinct kind of a cell death and this is again a programmed cell death like the other forms of cell death except necrosis we had seen other forms of cell death which are also programmed cell death right so this is also a program kind of cell death only but then uh, why it is programmed because it is involving certain set pathways and signaling molecules and this it is controlled by certain genes called as ATG genes. ATG is for autophagy, okay. So, ATG genes are the ones which are regulating this. So, it is called as a program cell type. Out of this, the ATG1 gene, which is the most important gene related to autophagy. So, this is the most important gene related to autophagy. So, who is he? He is the Japanese scientist Yoshinori Osumi. And he won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for identifying the mechanisms of autophagy and he was the one who had identified these autophagy genes, ATG genes, okay. So he actually gave this mechanism of autophagy. So coming to the types of autophagy, we have four main types of autophagy. Uh, the macro autophagy which is the most common type of autophagy. Here and actually whatever are organelles which are which has to undergo degradation. It is being targeted. Suppose we have the mitochondria here, endoplasmic reticulum here over here, then we have this Golgi apparatus. So there is a autophagosome, a membrane autophagosome is formed around these organelles and these are targeted. The territory for these organelles are being marked for dying. So these uh, targeted uh, organelles will be inside something called as an autophagosome. This formation of an autophagosome is characteristic of a macro autophagy. So moving on to mitophagy, it is actually a type of macro autophagy only, but here the target organelle will be the mitochondria. So the mitochondria around this, we have this autophagosome formation and mitochondria will get degraded. So mitophagy. Third type is the micro autophagy, wherein there is no autophagosome formation over here. It is just that whatever organelle which has to uh, undergo degradation, it will come to the lysosomal membrane and there it will undergo endocytosis. 
So the fourth type is the chaperone mediated autophagy. Chaperones we know are the ones which are responsible for the proper folding of the proteins, right? The proteins undergo proper folding because of chaperones. It is assisted by these chaperones. So whenever misfolded proteins are there, it will undergo autophagy by this chaperone mediated autophagy. So where else have we read about this misfolded proteins form of cell death? Remember? Yes, it is in apoptosis. Whenever misfolded proteins are there, it will lead to another form of cell death, which is the apoptosis. Here we see it can also lead to autophagy. So, uh, we will discuss uh, these types one by one. First is the macro autophagy. This was the most common form of autophagy. So, whenever there is this uh, decrease in growth factor or starvation, decrease in nutrition, what happens is it will lead to a uh, initiation complex. So, this initiation step will then further proceed on to something called as the formation of phagophore. What is this phagophore? It is nothing but a isolation membrane it is just a membrane like this will be formed and this process is called as nucleation so this isolation membrane can be derived from endoplasmic reticulum most commonly but it can also be derived from the mitochondrial membrane or the plasma membrane as well okay so this isolation membrane is initially starting to form this is the this is the nucleation step this is the formation of the phagophore so, next what happens is this phago 4 which is just a membrane, it is now trying to become a vesicle. It will, uh, this uh, isolation membrane will go and target the organelle which was present over here and then around this organelle it is going to extend and that is called as elongation or maturation wherein this autophagosome which is actually the vesicle, the completed phago 4 which is the vesicle formation is there. So, this autophagosome is being formed. So, next what happens is this autophagosome with the target organelle inside it. So, whatever the target organelle, whatever it is, it is present inside it. It will now go and fuse with this lysosome. Okay, this was the autophagosome with this target organelle. Now, it is going to fuse with the lysosome. So, this is called as a autophagolysosome. So, whenever once this autophagosome has uh, combined with this lysosome, it is forming this autophagolysosome and inside the lysosome, this organelle, whatever the cargo it had taken and come, it will get degraded. Okay. So, this is the cruised uh, formation of macro autophagy. First, we saw pre-autophagosomal structure formation, which is the initiation. Next, we saw the formation of the phago 4, which is nothing but the isolation membrane and this process is called as nucleation. Thirdly, we saw this uh, phago 4 being extended into a vesicle formation around the target organelle under the elongation and maturation step. So, this autophagosome which was formed then fuses with the lysosome forming autophagolysosome and there the organelle gets degraded. So, what is the actual mechanism present in this macro autophagy? So, this initiation I told resulted in the formation of this pre-autophagosomal structure, right? This initiation actually happens by something called as an initiation complex or the ULK1 complex. So, this ULK1 complex, this complex is present, it will get associated with these autophagy proteins. Autophagy proteins, this complex together is called as the initiation complex. This will result in the formation of the pre-autophagosomal structure, pass. So, this uh, initiation complex will now activate the second complex which is the Becklin1 complex. So, there is something called as Becklin1 Becklin 1 will again relate with certain autophagy proteins and then that will lead to the formation of this phago 4 and this step is called as the nucleation. So, next what happens is this Becklin 1 will in turn with the help of two ubiquitin kind of uh, proteins, it will again lead to the convalent linking of two proteins which is phosphatidyl ethanolamine with that of a microtubule associated light chain protein 3. Just remember it as PELC3. So, this PE is going to get covalent, uh, covalently linked with that of a LC3. This, is, uh, this Becklin 1 is causing this covalent linkage. So, this what does this PELC3 cause? This PELC3 is the one which is responsible for the formation of the autophagosome. So, this structure, uh, this uh, step in which the autophagosome is formed is the elongation and maturation step, right? That is the vesicle closing around the organelle, the target organelle. Vesicle closing around the target organelle. So, now this autophagosome which has formed will now go fuse with the autophago, uh, with the lysosome and form an autophago lysosome and then the organelle will get degraded in the inside the lysosome. So, let me put it in the simpler uh, diagram. So, ULK1 ATG which was the initiation complex right, this was the initiation complex. This 
can activate the Becklin 1 which was the nucleation complex. Becklin 1 is the most important uh, one which is responsible for nucleation. So, this Becklin 1 will now covalently link this PELC3. This will in, in turn result in autophagy, right? So, if I want to inhibit this autophagy, what is the one which is for first step when I want to inhibit? It is something called as an mTOR. What is mTOR? It is mammalian target of rapamycin, we know, right? Mammalian target of rapamycin. So, mTOR will actually inhibit this ULK1 complex by phosphorylating it. It will phosphorylate this complex and it will inhibit it. So, mTOR actually inhibits autophagy. However, Rapamycin, mTOR was mammalian target of rapamycin. Rapamycin is an inhibitor of uh, mTOR. Remember, M M uh, rapamycin is an inhibitor of mTOR. So, rapamycin or whenever there is starvation or malnutrition, it will actually inhibit this mTOR. So, this will promote autophagy. This will actually lead to autophagy, right? In a normal state, the cell in uh, the cell will actually have increase in the mTOR protein. So, this mTOR protein will actually phosphorylate the initiation complex. So, autophagy will not happen. However, whenever there is a uh, starvation or a new, uh, new, uh, malnutrition or when we give drugs like rapamycin, it will inhibit this mTOR. So, now phosphorylation of initiation complex cannot take place and autophagy will proceed. Okay. So, this can be asked in various contexts in MCQ questions. Okay. So, coming to the second inhibition which is Becklin 1. Becklin 1 we know will activate autophagy. However, Becklin 1 whenever it meets with the BCL2, whenever Becklin 1 and BCL2, BCL2 do you remember it was an anti-apoptotic protein. So, whenever uh, Becklin 1 meets with BCL2, it will actually inhibit autophagy. So, whenever BCL2 and uh, Becklin 1 meet, they will inhibit the autophagy. Okay. So, this has been implicated in carcinogenesis. These can serve as targets to inhibit or activate autophagy, whatever. So, this is again a question which has been asked. So, coming to the last part which was uh, PELC3 which was responsible for the formation of autophagosome. So, this is the most important one which had resulted in the formation of autophagosome, right? So, this is rightfully called as the marker of autophagy. So, PELC3 is the marker of autophagy. Next, we will see about mitophagy which is the subtype or a type subtype of macro autophagy only wherein the target organelle is the mitochondria. So, here again there is a damaged mitochondria. So, around which we have the formation of this autophagosome. This autophagosome will then fuse with the lysosome forming an autophago lysosome and this mitochondria will get damaged. Right. So, this uh, mitophagy, uh, uh, how does this happen? How does the mitochondria invite uh, autophagy? Because these damaged mitochondria will express these uh, proteins called as PINK1 and PARKIN. Very important. PINK1 and PARKIN are being expressed by the damaged mitochondria and this will in turn trigger the mitophagy. This has been implicated, mitophagy has been implicated in Parkinson's disease wherein there is an impaired mitophagy, okay. Remember Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder wherein PARK1, uh, PARKIN and PINK1 gene have been implicated. So, this uh, mitophagy is impaired in Parkinson's disease. Moving on to the next type of autophagy which is microautophagy. Here, there is no autophagosome formation. Remember, there is no autophagosome formation. Autophagosome formation was present only in macroautophagy and mitoautophagy. So, here what happens is, suppose this is the lysosome. So, suppose this is the cell, okay. This is the cell and inside here I have this lysosome. This lysosomal membrane will invaginate like this and whatever organelle or cargo is there, it will take up. Okay. So, this is the lysosome. So, this happens by the invagination of the lysosomal membrane which is called as the endocytosis. So, endocytosis of the lysosomal membrane will take in the cargo and once the cargo enters the lysosome, it will get degraded. So, microautophagy is by endocytosis by the lysosomal membrane. So, next third or fourth type of autophagy is the chaperon mediated autophagy. So, chaperons I mentioned, these are responsible for the proper folding of the proteins. So, whenever there is a misfolded protein, a chaperon will associate with that and it will try to either uh, correct the folding or it has to undergo degradation. So, if the, uh, it, it cannot be corrected, suppose the misfolded protein cannot be corrected, what will happen? This misfolded protein is attached with a 
chaperon hsp something is heat shock protein 17 which is actually a chaperon okay so this chaperon will associate with this misfolded protein and take it up to the lysosomal membrane and inside the lysosomal membrane it will drop it and the misfolded protein will get degraded over there so when this complex of misfolded protein and chaperon has to enter through the lysosome it is through a channel called as lamp 2a which is LAMP 2A is lysosome associated membrane protein 2A and this has been asked as a question. So, chaperon mediated autophagy is via this LAMP 2A, this uh, chaperons and uh, uh, misfolded protein will enter into the lysosome wherein it gets degraded. So, what is the clinical significance of this autophagy? So, autophagy uh, is actually uh, implicated in carcinogenesis cancer. It is a double-edged sword here actually. It can either promote cancer or it can prevent cancer. So, both ways it can be uh, implicated. Then in neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson and Huntington, Huntington's. In Parkinson's, I mentioned it was a mitophagy which was responsible, right? So, Crohn's, and, uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis which is IBD. Here, there is the ATG16L is defective or there is a single nucleotide polymorphism. So, this polymorphism will result in the increased susceptibility for IBD. Whenever there is ATG16L, uh, so a single nucleotide polymorphism, it will result in IBD. And in uh, infections as well, like TB, Shigella, then herpes simplex 1. In uh, Whenever there is an ATG5 defect or a deletion, ATG5 defect or deletion, especially in the macrophages, it will lead to an increased risk of tuberculosis. So, both of this has been asked in uh, questions, ATG16 uh, L defect and ATG5 defect. Here again, it is increased risk of tuberculosis. Here it was increased risk of IBD. Okay. To summarize, what was autophagy? It was nothing but a self-eating, which was a survival mechanism for the cell to uh, survive in conditions like aging, nutrition, malnutrition, and this can, can be both physiological and pathological. Then we saw about the types of autophagy, which is micro macro autophagy, which was the most common, wherein we saw the formation of autophagosome. Then in that most important thing to remember was PLC3, which is the marker of autophagy. Then we saw the inhibitors as well. Then mitoautophagy, which was a subtype of macro autophagy, wherein mitochondria is being uh, targeted. And Parkinson's disease is, is one in which there is impaired mitophagy. Then thirdly, we saw about the mi microautophagy, uh, then uh, which was endocytosis of the lysosomal membrane. Fourthly, chaperon mediated autophagy. Uh, uh, there we have to remember about the LAM2A protein. Remember? And then the most important gene for autophagy was autophagy 1 gene, which is ATG1. Then the, we saw about certain diseases. The most important thing we uh, that to remember is Crohn's, this is IBD in which there was single nucleotide polymorphism in ATG16L and then in uh, ATG5 defect or deletion, especially in macrophages, it led to an increased risk of susceptibility, susceptibility for tuberculosis. Okay, so remember these things. So, let us meet in the next class which is on intracellular accumulation. Thanks for listening. If you like my content, consider subscribing and sharing it to your friends who might also benefit from the video. Thank you.